Hey folks, my name is Jeff, and in today's video, I want to add syntax highlighting to our blog that we are writing in Blazor. Since I'm a developer and my blog is focused on software development, a lot of my blogs contain code in it, and I want my code to be formatted and look similar to how it does inside of an IDE. This is a page for my current blog, and this is what I'm referring to is this block right here. And so what we need to do is we need to have a way of taking a string of text, in this case, it would be this function right here, and we want to add formatting to it so that we get the keyword highlights and things like that. And we could do this ourselves, but there are libraries out there that will do this for you. The tool that I'm going to use is called Highlight.js. And even though we are writing our blog tool in C Sharp, I could not find any tools that were written in C Sharp that would do this for us, or at least not any good ones. But the general idea for this tool is that you include the JavaScript files that you need, you wrap the code that you want to highlight inside of a pre and a code tag, and then you call this highlight all method. And since one of the main focuses of our application is server-side rendering, there are a few extra steps we have to take to make sure that this JavaScript will work when rendered on the server. And luckily for us, Microsoft has a page that is dedicated to doing just that. I'll put a link to this down below, but in this article, they outline all the steps you have to take to make sure that JavaScript will get called correctly from a statically rendered server-side page. And really quick, before we jump into the code, I just wanna show what the current page looks like. And of course, this is a work in progress, so it's not you know perfectly refined yet. But we have our nav bar, we have our title, we have our connect with us and recent posts on the right side over here. And then here's that block of code that we want to format. Here's the code that I currently have set up for this page and I've done a little bit of behind the scenes work since the last video. Most of that work is just creating different components that are going to be used for different types of blocks. So for example, here's a heading block. Here's the post information for the date and the category and my name. Here's just a simple paragraph block. Here's a code block that we're gonna be working on today. And then finally, we have the connect with us and the recent and related sections that are on the right hand side. Today's main focus, of course, is going to be on this code block. And I'm using a render fragment to pass in this variable, which is called docker run, which is actually wrong. That should be migrations. And that migrations block of text is just a big block of text that I stole from my actual blog post on my site. And if I go into that code block, you can see all I'm doing is I'm putting the code inside of a pre tag and then a code tag. And then I have just a little bit of styling on it. Now let's start adding the things from the Microsoft documentation page to get this JavaScript to work for us on our statically rendered page. The first thing we need to do is we need to add a co-located JavaScript file that's going to have this onload, onUpdate, and onDispose functions inside of it. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that, head over to our page here. I'll probably end up changing this a little bit in the future, but for now I'm going to put that JavaScript file on my SQL on MacBook Razor page. So I'll add a new JavaScript file, SQL on MacBook.Razor.js. And then inside of here, I'm just gonna put in those methods from the documentation. And the next step is to create a Razor class library in our solution. And a Razor class library is basically just a way of putting code and components into a library that can be shared across multiple projects in your solution. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to create a JavaScript library module, and then we're going to add this page script component that we're going to use a little bit later. So back in our solution, if you right click on your solution and say, add new project, and then change the type to Razor class library. I'm just gonna call my project name Blazor blog library. And now we want to create this JavaScript file and then paste all this content into it. So I'll go ahead and copy that. Actually, I'll copy the name first. And then inside the WW root folder, we're going to add a JavaScript file. Then we'll copy the code and put it in. And then finally, we need to add this page script component. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And then in our library, we're going to add a component called page script and then paste in that code. And then we need to actually use this page script component in our blog post. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this right here, and I'm gonna go into our SQL on MacBook Razor page. At the top, I'm going to add in that page script. And you can see here that I've pasted that in here, but it's not recognizing that page script is an actual component. So what we need to do is we need to add a reference to that library in our project so that we can use it. So under the project, under dependencies, and then .NET 8.0, there's a projects, you can right click and say reference, and then you want to check the Blazor blog library and add that. And then we need to go add that to our imports file. So go to imports and then add the using statement for that library. So now I've added that using statement and if I go back to my Razor page, now you can see that it's recognizing that's an actual component. And then of course we need to update the path to the source. So ours is under components and then pages and then blog. The path for where mine is at is components, pages, and then blog, and then SQL on macbook.razor.js. I did catch a mistake that I made there. When you add this JavaScript file for the module, 
you need to make sure that the beginning of it is the same name as your project name. So I think before I had it as Blazor page script, which was the example from Microsoft. This needs to be Blazor blog library in my case, and then .lib.module.js. So after making that change, if you run the application and then you go into the console and you refresh the page and you'll see now that it's printing out loaded and updated. And that's coming from that co-located JavaScript file, which is printing out loaded and updated right here. And what that means now is that we can go and we can get the JavaScript for the highlight JS, add that to our application, and then call the highlight all method from this file. So I'll go back to the homepage for highlight.js and the way that I'm going to do this is I'm just going to add the CDN files that they have so that we don't have to actually include those files in our application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this link for the CSS, put that in my app.razor and do the same thing for the JavaScript file. Here's the app.razor page. So up here at the top, I'm just going to go ahead and paste in that CSS file. And I also included the JavaScript file. So I'll move that down here to the bottom. And then I'm going to take this hljs, which is highlightjs.highlightall method, and I'm just going to copy that, go into the SQL on MacBook Razor JavaScript file, and in the onload, I'll leave that there, but I'm also going to call hljs.highlightall. Now if I go back and I refresh this page, and if I scroll down, you can see now that there is a little bit of highlighting going on. This is working for us because this hljs object is being loaded by the highlight.js JavaScript file that we added in our app.razor page. And then what happens when you call highlight all is it's going to look for things inside of those pre and code tags and then it's going to format it. And so if we go really quick and look at the code block, since ours is inside of a pre and a code tag, it's going to try to automatically detect what language it is and then format it for us. And going back, you can see it does a pretty good job. Um, the correct words are highlighted. And I believe by default, highlight.js will do you know, the C languages, so C, C++, C Sharp. But if you go back into their documentation, there is other files you can add for more languages. So in their example here, if you're writing code in Go, you can add this Go JavaScript right here, and it will format and highlight your Go code correctly. In my case, most of the stuff that I'm going to be highlighting in my blog is going to be JavaScript, TypeScript, and C Sharp. And I believe all of those are handled by default from this library. So for now, I'll leave it as it is. And I think for now, that's good enough for what I need for my blog. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.